Oh, good. We're going chasing. Hello, dear, and welcome to... We're going chasing. Hello, no. and welcome to... We're going chasing. Now, we have a lot on the agenda, lads, so we'll cut the chase and get straight down to the business. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of We're Going Chasing. What a week we had last week, Killian. Uh, you just can't beat it. Um, it's all behind us now. It's in the rear view mirror. And we'll be looking forward to the likes of Punchestown and Aintree. Um, you know, and I suppose it won't be too long coming around to Cheltenham uh, again next year. But what a week. Yeah, thank God it only happens once a year because I wouldn't be able for, for any more days. I, I'd vote to go back to three days. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just... Body for the quality of racing or just for no, the body can to take four. Yeah, um, yeah. And take four at all. So uh, yeah. I, I'd vote to go back to three. I well, I think the quality of racing improved too. Um there's less chance to back losers, I yeah. suppose. To be uh, fair to you now, Killian, you were you were out the latest out of all of us every night, I'd say. Like yeah, yeah, sure. that last night, the Thursday night, you know, we were all gone. I was I was the second last up. I was half one, I think, and you didn't get into the door till about five to four. <laughs> which is savage going after three days of racing you know and a gold cup day to come yeah but sure did I have a pint at the gold cup day then I didn't like you know so um, yeah yeah the fella with us that couldn't even keep down water on gold cup day you know yeah um, yeah we did yeah, so yeah. and he, like, he, he was in bed about 10 o'clock in the door yeah he day. was but he did it he did a waffle there he had 11 pints strank before two put one the stairs out of like yeah so, yeah yeah you know, fair <laughs> is fair he gave it a right rattle he said yeah, to me yeah. around 11 o'clock in the Guinness Village Thursday morning, he goes, I'm not going to leave a fucking drop in it. Yeah. Uh, same yeah. fella flew home from Australia, though, I suppose, for the racing. So, so he it had was well-deserved. <laughs> it was. It was well-deserved. Um, For next year, too, I, I don't know. It'd be great if there was anybody here who wanted to drop their phone number um, to any of us there that Killian could call there in the morning, there on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the morning to Cheltenham. There's nothing worse uh, than talking to Killian, waking up at about nine o'clock, and Killian is just yep, 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 yep. Yeah, but you're hammered if, still. Like it's as if he's still hammered. Yeah, yeah but that's the thing. It's, like still hammered. It's, like. it's as if somebody has just put fifty p or a euro in him, and he's like a jukebox there, just yeah. bitting out information and yeah, yeah. constantly talking. So that's just one for next year. If anybody wants to speak to Killian, but the only um, thing is now, I will say the Wednesday morning this year. There was all talk in the house about El Fabiolo, this and on the famous treble. I said, well, he'll be better. I said, Captain Innes is going to bait him. The lads yeah. laughed at me. Well, I fucking had the last laugh there. You yeah. Know? I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But sure, even a broken clock is right twice a day, isn't that what they well, say? You know, he won it anyway. Juan <laughs> Landy, boy. He did. Exactly. Fair play to Declan Landy and fair play to, to Captain Guinness, Rachel Blackmore, the whole lot of them. It was well deserved. Um, was you know, it was well deserved. Uh, he's been knocking on the door there for grade ones. You put him up last year at 66 to one for the oh, championship. Sorry. And I, la- I laughed at you. You did, yeah, um, yeah. Well, I laughed at you now. So. Yeah, well, I, I love the horse too. I was delighted to see him yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he wasn't as big as he was last year, but... Uh, no, no, he still won though. Yeah, 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 he, he did yeah, indeed. He sure, look, Killian, we'll, we, we'll move on and we'll get into it because we can yeah, talk yeah. and ramble on there all day. Um, But uh, I suppose, first of all, if you're looking at owners and you're looking at who's in the green... Um, JP JP McManus has to be there with his five winners. Um, you know Limerick Lace, Majbra. I know the way you're thinking. Fact to file, Corbett's Cross. We'll touch on them. Um, later on, uh, in the show, but I suppose Rob Core as well, and it just ties in with the first race there, the Supreme Novices Hurdle. They had six runners. Um, over the course of the week, uh, they had two firsts. Uh, and obviously Chupu and Slade Steel. Uh, two seconds, Jerry Colombe and Irish Point in two championship races. Um, and then they had it pulled up and uh, brought down. Um, so they were they were big winners um, over the course of the week. Uh, so it's it's important to note that. And we'll start with Slade Steel, Killian. Um, you know, that, uh, that two-mile trip coming off a, a hard pace, really. And uh, he just stayed on very well. He did, yeah. He probably got to the front too soon as well. Um, <clears throat> he's a horse that... He holds an awful lot up his sleeve, I think. It showed that day in Navin, like, beating Lecky Watson by whatever, a length and a half it was that day. Like, he's he's a mild bit of horse than that. He keeps a lot to himself. And uh, when he got to the front, he, he didn't do a tap. Uh, Mystical Power, I know on the race in IQ, it was a two-length swing, the jump at the last from Mystical Power versus Slade Steel. So he's lost two there. He's been headed. He's probably a length. No time for that. A quarter down. Yeah. And I know you hate it, but it's a fact, like, yeah, length, sure length, a quarter down. Yeah. 
eyeballs mystical power says up yours goes past him and runs away and uh, yeah. nice but clear third as well um i thought it was a fair performance and uh, a real fuck you to any yeah yeah no it was uh it, it was a fair performance from him to be fair i thought rachel while she got there possibly maybe earlier than she would have liked i thought she gave a great rate all this yeah. great ride all the same in terms of she was cool she knew that she had the horse uh under and she just wanted to pop the last um you know mystical power was thrown into it um there by mark walsh rachel just took her time popped it and knew that she had the horse under him uh to take off so i i was quite taken uh by slade steel it's very important to mention while we're talking about the supreme and we're talking about slade steel um i think asian master and the costellos deserve to be in the green um asian master was i'm almost certain was bred by the costellos is uh is owned by tom costellos the jockey's parents um, they both own the horse. Tom obviously rides the horse, six foot four inches. Uh, the man stalls at, uh, stands at. Uh, fierce tall man. Um, and you know it's just nice to have a story like that. They were fourth there, only five lengths behind Slade Steel. Um, you know that horse is three from uh, is two from three over hurdles now, but uh, you know he probably surpassed their expectations, and I'm sure they were delighted with it. And uh, you know it's it's a nice story to be fair to see something like that as well. No, definitely. I think you talk about the, the Navin race that had um, Slade Steel, Lecky Watson, Stellar Story, Better Days Ahead. It's important to know as well for Navin that um, Asian Master beat Better Days Ahead in a, in a novice hurdle up there as well on his last run before he went to the festival. So in fairness, Navin is, is a good breeding ground for, for these winners this year, it seems. Yeah, I was actually looking back at it um, because there was a lot of horses that seemed to run at Navin and then went well at Cheltenham. Captain Guinness, you've just named two there, fact to file. Um, but out of the Irish trained winners, 33% of them, a third of them had actually ran at Navin earlier on in the year, um, you know, which is a lot for, for a track that's not a huge track. Um, you know, but it's a good national hunt track and good horses go there. Um, you know, so uh, that that's interesting that you uh, actually noticed that there as well. Um, I suppose we'll we'll stay on Rob Core. Um, I will just finish Rob Core off there in the green with Chupu. Um, again, Garden uh, and Connections got a lot of stick here around in the year for what they were doing with the horse. Um, ran ran him in the Hatton's Grace and bet him pair of passe that day, and then left him off for a hundred and two days. Um, you know, before he hacked up really in the stairs hurdle was full value for his win. And um, you know, it's vindication um for uh last year and for their decision uh to go straight to the stairs hurdle this year after the Hatton's Grace. Yeah, I think so. I think well, like they've already won a gun my hurdle at the end of the day, the gun my hurdle is only a grade two. Uh, it's a grade one horse. Like from the Hatton's Grace, your only option really between between the Hatton's Grace and and Cheltenham was, is the is the couple like they likes the Cleve the Cleve Hurdle is not a great one is it is it a great one, uh I don't know the the long walk in um in Ascot but well, that's the same that's the same as um as going to the Grade One at Christmas and they already won that with Irish points so I don't think there was aside from the Galmoy which was running horrendous ground in Navin or in or in Goran Park and. You saw how Monkfish ran ran the Gold Cup after it. Um, I I think it was it was it was it was dead right. Um, to, to not run between now and then, and like Shakar and saying the horse might go to Punchestown again now. Like if he's going to three grade ones, he could end up winning three grade ones. You know, so wouldn't that be? Yeah. that's fair enough. I think. Yeah, 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 and uh, no f- fair horse all the same. He's still only seven, and in the man with the manner that he won that race, and you could see him with a bit of luck there. Knocking in a couple more if if Everton goes sweetly for him. Yeah, and um, look if if, if, if if Wright was right, he'd have probably won the race last year for maybe a, a, a better ride. Perhaps uh, he he probably would have won the race last year. And like you've you've to hand it to Florin Porter as well. Like he's he's some horse to come back from novice chase and to come back and run run a huge race in second in the stairs hurdle and as well. Buddy won. Like I I remember seeing Jack Gilligan get up the inside. I said Jesus fucking Christ. But he won is going to could be a serious danger here, and he just probably just probably just isn't as good as the horse in front of him. But he's still only beaten eight lengths, and he's he's came home in fourth. There was some run from the horse, and it's better his couple of efforts in Grade Ones anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, another owner, Killian, who did well was uh the pink and green, or Rich Ritchie, uh Gaelic Warrior, and lost him out both winning. Um, I suppose it's fair to start there with Gaelic Warrior. Like what happened to him at the DRF at Leopardstown. 
you know, unseated behind fact to file bet miles, um, you know, and then to turn it around like he did, um, you know, quite taken. I had doubts about him. I couldn't go near him to be honest. Um, you know, but he proved me wrong and he proved a lot of people wrong. Like two to one was a nice price on him for a horse who had easily the best form in the race. But clearly everybody, including myself, had doubts about going left handed and Cheltenham and, and how that would suit him. Yeah, I think like the, the performance he gave the first day out um in a beginner's chase. I know nothing else mightn't have been really put into it, but he gave an exhibition of jump on that day. And like you'll be thinking after the DRF, no way they're gonna go to Cheltenham. They'll just wait for the the Powers Gold Cup in um in Fairy House and he'll just go and win that. He's going around the right way. He'll he'll jump them into the ground. And um no said will you take her chance in a very weak Arkle? Um and he absolutely hosed up. Um like he gave a fair impressive performance now. I, I don't think it's it's worthy to say that he's gonna come back and win a champion chase. I I don't think so. But yeah, with a fair impressive Arkle winner all the same. He'd I suppose found a fifty and second Ile Thompson was was hammered um again at Cheltenham. So the question marks about him travelling over maybe, but yeah, no, Gaelic Warrior was was very impressive and you could see a long way out he was just going to win, wasn't it? Like it was yeah. it was blatantly obvious there coming to probably the, the third or fourth last that he was just travelling the best. He was jumping really well and that it was just a matter of standing up and he was going to win the race. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, the other winner there for the pink and green was Lassie Mouth. Um, you know, again, one that I sort of had doubts over. Like I, to be honest, I fancied her the whole time in the lead up to the race. Um, but just on the day with the way the ground was, it was heavy. Um, you know, I was thinking the step up and trip coupled with the heavy ground. I was thinking there's some doubts here, and um, there's a lot of doubts really. And at such a short price, um, I was keen to take her on. Now I took her on with Tell Me Something Girl, who was second at twenty two to one. So I suppose I. I took her took around with the right one, but uh, I was wrong to take her on. Yeah, I was the exact same. Uh, the ground and the I I wasn't too concerned about the trip. I thought she'd have enough class to, to get home on the trip. But yeah, but the ground really really went against me. I was yeah. looking at the quality of the field. Then you had Henry's three mares, you had Astro Diamond, Gallimar, So I was saying, you know, I love Envoy. You know, there's enough to take her on. I laid her for finish, and I'll hold my hands up. I uh, got that wrong, and um. Yeah, like Henry's three mares all ran really good races and like especially Lantry Lady for, for one, like her third start to go to Mare's Hurdle and, and come fourth and, and nearly get up beating the the same connections for for third. Um yeah. It, it would it was it was a fair run by her and she's going to be some horse over fence next year. But yeah, Lazzy Mouth's all she's all speed, she's all class. Um be be nice to see her now try and take on State Man next year. Um maybe Ballyburn as well, you know, you know, who knows? Um, how many of them are, are going to be there? I know Willie's saying Ballyburn could be the horse to try and emulate Don Run and win a champion hurdle in a gold cup. Like, where does that fit in with State Man? Does does Rich Richie want to go for the big one with Lazzie Mouth? I, I don't know. She could go winning this mayor's race for the next four or five years if she wanted to. Uh, she's yeah. that good. Yeah, you laid her, you laid her to be fair, yeah. but to be fair to you, Killian, you had the money under the coat at the same time at that stage. You know, yeah. you had your stage steel, you had your couple of winners before that. Yeah. Um, you know, so it wasn't uh, it wasn't a, a huge blow to you really. Yeah, well um, once Chanty Classical won, I was happy enough. Uh, uh, I'd need another winner for the rest of the week, really. Exactly, exactly. Um, you know, and uh, Slade Steel there. So you, you yeah, did have yeah. a good choose there. So yeah, you, yeah. you were entitled to stick your neck out there. Yeah. Um and uh, you know, you had you had the money under the coat and a bit of money behind you there uh, to keep you going. But uh Chanty Classical Killian, uh you had him up here on the anti post series. Um We'll actually give a quick update on the on the anti post series here. It's right uh, that we run through everything that we did. Um, so we both gave four horses, um, and your memory is a bit better than mine on it. So I'll leave you run through uh, all eight of them there, and just to give a very brief update on how we did. We only had one winner from the eight anyway. Yeah. So so out of your four, three of them didn't run. Yeah, so that's, which is that's it, which fair is, enough. Which um, is a huge blow considering I sat in this seat yeah. when I gave my first one and I actually made a point that I wanted to make sure the horses I picked were going to run in their races and that that was the intended target, barring injury. But go on anyway. Yeah, so you had Florin Porter for the RSA. He ran the stairs, ran a cracker. Three-card brag. He's not gone to the National Hunt Chase. He's staying at home for the Irish National. That's the yeah. right decision, though. The right decision. Um, but that's the right decision. We'll move on to the next one. Predator's Gold, you had him for the Bartlett. He ran the Ballymore and he was well yeah. beaten. 
and your your last one then was Cargis in the Triumph Hurdle. I think you're at 12s and she's ended up she's ended up coming second and she ran some race and coming down to the down to the last you're thinking geez this this mare is going to hose up here really isn't it she had yeah. marriage very well off the bridle and you know you've got to hand it it's handed to him for coming back at her but yeah that, that was a good pick in fairness so you got a few quid back for that yeah um, yeah then my four obviously Chanty Classico was put up at 12s he, he won the won the Ultima and that was a massive winner for me on the week um a brighter days ahead put up at seven to two for the mayor's novice she just Probably they just have the speech. race. We we'll talk about her later. We'll talk about her later. She she got beat. Um the Manella Indo, obviously the cross country was cancelled, so that goes down as a, a zero. Um, because it's unfortunate because he'd have absolutely thumped them. And the last one then the, the main one really was was Gentleman's game for the Gold Cup, put up at sixty sixes. Um look he didn't we will come to him later as well when we're discussing the Gold Cup, but but he, he didn't he didn't run his race at all. Um so that's the update on them. I made a few quid. You got a bit back, Um that that was it basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Chanty Classico was, uh, you know, was the was the main one there for you. Um, moving on there, um, from that, Killian. Uh, give me one second there now. What's uh, just open this back up again? Yeah, we had Stateman in the green. Um, now to be honest, I'd actually, I demote him now here to the amber here and now. Um, you know, he was good. But that's probably twice now that he hasn't really performed at Cheltenham to his best. Paul Townend was saying uh, last year that he felt that it wasn't a real statement that turned up. And I'd say to be quite disappointed with the run again. Obviously delighted that he's gone and won. Um, you know, but he's only three lengths ahead of Lucia. Um, nine lengths ahead of Zarek the Brave. Um, now, look, he, he went and won. He did what he had to do. Um, but a, a small bit underwhelming and... Uh, I, I would happily take him on there again next year, depending on what's there, obviously. But, you know, he, he's not one that I'd be pinning my colours to the mast on now, to be honest. Yeah, I agree with you. I think his, his three runs at Cheltenham the last three years have all been below what he's done in Ireland. Yeah. Um, bit of a hurricane fly about him as the Leopardstown specialist and just struggles a bit in Cheltenham. Like, you'd have to think if Bob Ollinger ran, Bob Ollinger had beaten him. Um, I think so anyway. Um, Like, yeah, that'd that'd be my theory on it. But look, he does. He ran to an RPR of one sixty. Wouldn't have won a lot of champion hurdles that. And I just think maybe now he may look he had a lot up his sleeve as well. I think, but uh, he definitely does run below himself in Cheltenham. And as you said, beaten Lucia by three lengths, who's a handicapper, and Irish Point, who's a two and a half mile horse, really. Um, plus, uh, by by that distance, isn't 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 real unbelievable form. But look, he's got it in his back pocket now. He's got the same amount of champion hurdles as Constitution Hill. And yeah. uh, like if we do see Constitution Hill again, maybe he'll go and win another one. But look, I, if it was me anyway, if I was Paul Townend, I think coming back next year, if I had the option of riding State Man or Lazzie Mouth, don't mind talking about Ballyburn, I'd be picking the mare. Yeah. Um, getting seven. I just think she'd she she's shown at Cheltenham. She's 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 done it there three times now, three unbelievable performances. Yeah, and I'd be siding with her and whatever about in Punchestown or in Leopardstown, maybe State Man's just a uh, yeah. notch above, but no, not over here, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, no, I'd uh, I'd be in agreement there. Would be an interesting, uh, it'd be interesting if that did transpire to be the case next year and you had two or three of those, um, to see what Paul would do. Um, but uh, another jockey, I suppose, who did very well was uh, Derek O'Connor. Um, you know, obviously, three rides over the course of the week. Um and he won on Corbett's Cross in the four miler and I know the way you're thinking in the Kim Muir uh and then second in the Hunter's Chase, um you know all for JP but Corbett's Cross particularly Killian deserves to be in the green there um you know he's absolutely spanked a whole lot of them it's the longest winning distance I can remember in the National Hunt Chase uh possibly ever to be honest I can't remember any horse winning by uh must have been about twenty lengths. Yeah, he's he absolutely holds up, didn't he? Um, hmm. you just wonder, like, does does is is Willie and JP thinking? Fuck it, Corbett's Cross probably would have won the RSA. Could have put back to file into the Turners and stopped the Skeletons winning one. I'd say that might be might be the one that's keeping uh JP and the boys up at night. But um, he was he was a devastating winner. Um, 
he's he's a brilliant horse and um uh, like I wasn't too convinced after after the last day when he when he came down and even like this real extreme trip you know would it completely suit him and the ground as well but you know he proved me wrong and uh, it was it was an unbelievable performance and like Derek is 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 top class he's as as good an amateur as we've ever seen yeah. uh, he's, he's won all these races before like he's just touched off in the hunter chase as well on a horrendous horse really like it's on the line was a horrible ride. Oh. Um, and like to to come second was was a fair yeah. achievement to him, like and how good of a horseman he is too. And um, but yeah, he's he, he's well deserved those those two winners, and hopefully we get to see him riding for years to come as well. I know there was talk of retirement, but he hasn't stepped out yet. Hopefully we'll keep to see him anyway. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, um, you know, I don't think there's another jockey in the field who would have got a, it's on the line to finish second. No, no. Uh, to be honest, and a close second. No mind that. jockey on the line. There's no jockey in racing. I'd say. No, no, yeah. I, I don't think so. Yeah, it was uh, it was it was a superb ride. Um, really, just the the way he persisted with the horse. Um, you know, it was it was acting up the whole way around. Really, uh, Ballyburn, what is there to say, Killian? Yeah, he's he's savage. Um, I'd say he'd probably won the champion hurdle on Tuesday. Has yeah. a good chance. He's he's a devastating horse. Um, wherever he goes, like we've said this about Ballymore winners in the past, but I think there's just. Like it does, like it's just, it's just even a cut above what's won it in the last few years. I'd say, and um, yeah. like, like I just said, Bob Ollinger was the most impressive Ballymore winner I've ever seen. But this lad is has probably surpassed him now. He's I guess, yeah. like, what he, well, he doing it at his ease as well. Like he was hardly touched coming up the running. He's like I know you had said the farm to a bit of a knock. Like Jimmy Desai, he was beaten in a maiden hurdle first time up by Asian Master. You know that is still decent farm. Like, but. Look, this lad is savage. Wherever he goes next year, he's going to be very hard to beat, be a champion hurdle or novice chasing. Uh, I'd say, like, if he does go novice chasing, I'd say it's going to be some horrendous small fields taking him on because you just want to run away from him because he's so good. Now, yeah. as I heard people saying his head carriage, he's like he's eating grass going around. It's unbelievable. And I love it. It is cool, like, and he's a real genuine horse, but, like, when his head's down that low, is he going to headbutt events, like? So, we'll see what the decision is right. made. We'll see what the decision is. Classical Dream had a similar thing and they kept him over hurdles for as yeah. long as they could. Um, So maybe we'll see the same. Look, if Willie thinks he's going to win a champion hurdle with him, I'm sure he'll want to keep him over hurdles. But like, if you were if you were the Donnellys, then you'd be saying, fuck off away. <laughs> leave yeah, leave yeah, our yeah. lad have it. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's some headache to go home to bed with, isn't it? Oh, you wouldn't complain too much about no. it if you had it. No, definitely not. Um, fact to file... In the RSA, again, didn't put a foot wrong really, Killian, did he? No, he's, um, he's... Jumped well, small bit <clears> keen <throat> around maybe early on, but, uh, you know, bet Monty Starr and Giovinco quite comfortably in the end, um, you know, and he looks really like, he looks like a genuine Gold Cup horse to me, um, to be honest, like the fact that over the shorter trips the earlier on in the year at Leperstown, he showed such speed. Um, you know, I wasn't quite sure if he got into a real battle here. Would he have the stamina in reserve? Um, and he certainly did. Uh, you know, he looks a real classy animal. Um, you know, I want to really look forward to later on this year and particularly next year in open company chasing. Yeah, he was entitled to be a bit keen given he was running over shorter trips early on, but he did like he's straightforward enough. I'd say he jumps really well. And the only thing I'll say is I know he'd a lot left at the line, but like Giovinco is very close. Giovinco is, is a handicapper at the end of the day and that's all he's going to be so yeah. I just wonder about that like she's Monty Starr ran some race as well um, yeah, and, and like in the way I think wasn't right lost a shoe and yeah, yeah. the after didn't yeah he? no so that you can you can you can discount him that run that wasn't yeah. that wasn't his true run he'd have been banged there with Monty Starr as well I'd say um, but very hard to see him beating the winner um, but yeah, I think the the front two in that race now, um, Vactify and Monty Stair, going to be two very nice staying chasers next year, and they both probably go better on nicer ground as well. That's the thing that like they've shown they can do it on this heavy bad stuff, but they'll they'll both be better on nicer surface too. Yeah, 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 they will indeed. Killian, we touched briefly on Captain Guinness the earlier on. Um, you know, to go from pulled up in Leopardstown there Christmas, whatever was up with him that day. <clears throat> Turn it around to win what turned out to be quite a weak champion chase. To be fair, um, it's still quite remarkable. Um, you know, like you can only beat what turns up on the day, and you've got to jump them. You know, they're there to be jumped. That's what the the name of the game is, really. 
um, and he jumped him and uh, he, he got what was fully deserved. Yeah, he did. It's amazing to think that his first grade one win in anything is going to be the champion chase. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was very well deserved. He just about got there. He was he was hanging a bit idling towards the end, but the stamina reserves were completely gone. Like he just walked onto the line. Uh, yeah. but thank God the horse behind him also didn't stay because he'd probably <laughs> been caught. Um, so that that was a huge plus to Captain Guinness. But like, look, he's a savage jumper. He only just about gets the trip, and he's the fastest horse over over fences in 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 Ireland or England. That's a fact. He's the quickest horse. It was there was a mile six race. He'd absolutely shit in like you know, um. He's he's savage, and it was it was very well deserved and delighted for Henry and the team and and Declan Landy as well. Like he's 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 won won a lot of grade twos, a lot of grade threes in the last few years, and for him to get that on such a big day, uh, is unbelievable. And like Rachel now has won the the three main championship races and the Ryanair, just leaving the stairs hurdle now, um. Yes. So be great to see her add that to the collection as well. And of course, the Grand National. So she's she's some collection of, of of winners there for for Henry, and they've had some some last sort of four or five years, a long yeah, yeah. She she does indeed. She does indeed. To be fair, um, Killian, looking on then uh, a bit later in the week, we had the Ryanair Chase. We had Protectorate, uh, beating Cap or beating um Envoy Allen there by four lengths. Uh, very impressive, really. Like you know, he was fifth there in the in the Gold Cup last year, which is good form, really. Stepping down into a race like this, um, you know, speaking about stamina reserves, I know we've mentioned it twice there already, but uh, there was never going to be any doubt with the trip. Uh, you know, a hard run race, uh, over this sort of trip was always going to suit him, um, and you know, it's a uh, f- fair play to him, really. Um, and Vialen looked like he was going to. Holds up really coming to the last. I thought Rachel was traveling very well on him. Um, you know, it just looked as if he was going to put the foot down there and, and exert his dominance, but it wasn't to be. Yeah, I think he's probably just outstayed on the day that like turning in, she's she's nearly she's pulling double nearly. Like she's, I, I turned to the fellow beside me and said, This this horse is going to win by about 10 lengths. Um she was traveling even better than she was last year, I suppose. Probably like it would have appreciated a bit of nicer ground, but I think it was just outstayed by protect track yeah. for a finish. Um, is all and in violence still ran ran a massive race and he could really comes alive around Cheltenham and he's he's had some great days there, but yeah, it's just a pity he couldn't have added another one like protect track's farm. I know we were speaking about it, um, there, um, but like he'd, he'd been hammered a couple of times this year, um, uh, so like it was it was a fair a fair performance from the skeletons to get him back and like to add two. Um, uh, two grade ones on the day, as well is is a fair fair achievement for for him. But yeah, uh, yeah, I think I think in Violin, look, he's he's a ten year old now. He's probably had, he's probably had his days in the sun, like. But um, I th- I do think that um, yeah, it's a fair training performance from Skelton. I like, just looking at protector at here, bet twenty nine lengths in the bet fair chase, beaten by Broadway Boy in a handicap. I know he was carrying top weight, but. Beaten in Lingfield by Long Press, beaten in Newbury by Shishkin. Yeah. Like last you know, Thursday was his day too. At the same time, you know. Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah. But he he'd been he he hadn't. I suppose I suppose he'd been running well all season. But you you wouldn't have said he was he was any better than he was last year. But it was it was a fair training performance now to work back from from the Ryanair and like he went off a big price too and like conflated another one. You'd be you'd be giving a hat tip to Jesus that like he ran some race to continue yeah. third. Like he's another another serious horse, like um yeah, and and you were told and, about stage star, and the bubble was completely burst. The writing was on the wall after January that he had no chance in this race, and that was that was that was what happened. He was he was thumped really, wasn't it? Yeah, and Banbridge was thumped as well. Did uh, Banbridge Banbridge ran did he? Yeah, Banbridge. Oh, geez. Ran. I was just looking down there. I see six, seven, eight, nine. Oh geez, yeah. and he would he wouldn't have won it on good ground either because he's not a he's not a top grade no, no. horse. No, the senior another one. There was plenty of talk about thumped. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that, that, that's it, really. Yeah. Uh, on Friday, JP continued having a great day. I know the way your thinking was there, very well backed. Um, but one that wasn't well backed and did the business was Majbur. He drifted from about seven to two in the morning out to six to one. Um, you know, and he turned that form around with Cargis. A lot of people, you know, really liked the way that he ran on at the Dublin Racing Festival on his first run for Willie Mullins after after winning there in France. Um, you know, and 
I, I wonder did Danny get to the front a small bit too early Um, that's what I thought to be honest uh, watching I haven't watched the race back now to be honest with you but I thought that Danny was just there a small bit too early Uh, but Marjborough was just a, just a real strong stayer at that trip uh, he was staying on at Leopardstown and again just a real a, a dour stare at that trip to be honest on heavy ground too Um, you know and it's probably just a case of the best horse on the day one yeah I agree with you I think I, I thought Danny might have got that too soon, but I don't think he had a choice. There was, there was only a few horses in the race. Uh, everything else fell out of the back of the television and Danny was just sort of left there and he, he could do no more, I don't think. And like coming to the last, I think, geez, Cargis has, has him covered here. He's Mark Walsh has been off it since turning in. And um, yeah, just just really, really strong stare. And um, hopefully he goes novice chase and next year you'd like, like to see him use that the weight allowance in the early part of the season. And if Sherlock, if he, if he wasn't able to lie up with them, you can always go back hurdle and, and or give him give him a break and come back in the following yeah, year. You don't wouldn't know what will he do with him. You know, uh, and... he, well, he said he was. He said when he got him, he said to the lads, he said, "Why? I thought you were buying me a juvenile hurdler, not a three mile chaser." So okay, right. Um, it looks like he will go chasing, and you'd like to see him. Like he'd be he'd be a horse that like looking at the way he finished out the race, he get two and a half miles standing on his head, um, yeah, yeah. and sure, like he'd be a Turner's an RSA horse next year. You'd imagine, yeah, yeah. Um, and whichever one, I suppose they've got a lot of holes to fill, um, and they've very hard to go from a triumph into that sort of level next year too. At the same time, it I is, hate, but he's he's I a special hate, horse. Hate triumph for horses going forward, um, you know, I just I, I know last time out this year uh, was an exception to the rule, but it, more often than not. Um, I think they're more bust than anything. Certainly, certainly the the first year after, and even after that, to be honest, I think they often flatter to deceive, um, you know, and and they often go better at at longer trips, which which would be uh suited to Majbur here in this case. Mm. But Killian, we'll move on there. Um, to stellar story, Sam Ewing getting his first winner. Um, at Cheltenham, uh, the jukebox man looked as if he had stolen it. Um, from the front really but stellar story just uh, found a bit more there coming up the hill and and fought back very well yeah Jesus it was it was it was a weird race like they were the first two all the way around and like they didn't seem to be going that hard and then suddenly um Keelan Woods just kicked off off the jukebox man so saying Jesus stellar stories and there's serious pressure here that and nothing's getting into it that, that's yeah. that's the worst thing. Like no nothing from the back is coming in. No, you're saying this lad has stolen a grade one from the front. It's 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 an unbelievable ride. And then Sam Ewing starts galvanizing the horse, and he just doesn't stop. He's doing his best work after the last, and ends up getting there. And um, yeah, like he he didn't jump the last two eight either. Like he was he landed sort of flat footed, and like he had to get going again. And it was it was some performance I think from from Stellar Story and to be seven lengths clear of, of, of dancing city there you've lecky watson back in fifth in as well it was it was it was a fair performance and like you wouldn't have said when this horse won in navin um over two and a half miles that he go off 33 to one for a battle that he was so impressed with that day at the navin racing festival um and then he was still only beaten five lengths by by slade steel in, in a grade two when he went off favorite and like just i suppose bet another twice since like he was that sort of do you remember we spoke about earlier in the year, the battle-hardened Bartlett horse? Yeah. He was that. He was. Yeah. And he was completely overlooked. And like I didn't even look down as far as him, if I'm being completely honest. And the worst part was, the day after he won in Navin, I backed him for the Bartlett in a double with the mayor for the mayor's novice. Did you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, I, 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 I had him picked out. I just I'd failed to collect is all. Yeah, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. no. A fair horse and uh, look his bumper form last year was was top notch as well so like he's yeah he's a well deserved grade one there yeah and uh, Galloping de Champs just brilliant uh, hold my hands up there too I was wrong on him I felt that uh, you know he had reached such high levels time and time again I thought that can the horse keep on doing it um, and so happens he could um, you know a, another brilliant performance as good as any from him really to be honest uh, Jerry Colomb has ran a super race there in second, but Gallopin again just jumped well. Um, you know, traveled well, and then again just had the had the money in the bank there in the finish to to push on again a bit further, and nothing really worried him too much to be honest. The loose horse probably helped him a small bit. Um, you know, just to focus there. I suppose he had a horse with him there in the home straight. Um, but well deserved. 
yeah, he's he's savage horse. Um, yeah, I, I think the from when they started riding him positively, that the writing was on the wall for everyone else. Um, and like I know I saw people talking about faster slow, faster slow wouldn't have matched in the no, goal. No. Did you see the way the horse finished out the race? Uh, yeah. legless and that's without having 12 stone on his back um, no he, he'd, have had, he'd have had no chance and like I, I think that's a better performance by Gallop and Deschamps this year than last year I know he was visually more impressive last year but he really had to grind it out this year and he had two real real strong stairs in behind him like Jerry Colomb is at three runs this year he's won a grade one and second and two others he won three grade ones last year like he's a real real top horse and like I know people said he lacks a bit for speed, but he's an awful strong stare. And like Laham Press then finished like legless coming up the hill, another really good horse. Like I think it was I think it was a stronger renewal than last year. Um and yeah. he, I know it wasn't as visually impressive as as kicking on from Brave Man's game from the back of the last, but it was it was a truer run race. It was on worse ground and he still did it and did it in some style. Like he's he's savage. And hopefully yeah. now we see him again in Punchestown and he can he can bounce out and, and rid the demons of what, what happened last year because, like, it just they were it, the, the the way they rode him last year cost him the race. And, like, even when he goes back to the John Durkin now next uh, next December, let's see him bounce out over two and a half miles and, yeah, and go out and do it and use his jumping right. instead of holding up. Yeah. Um, and we'll move on to the Amber Day or Killian. Um, I was wrong there in Galloping, you were wrong on brighter days ahead. I was right on brighter days ahead. You were right on galloping. Yeah. Uh, she didn't have the stuff off the bridle. Um, as simple as that. Uh, a lot of talk about her. She'd be a very, very good horse going forward. Very good horse over a longer trip. Uh, but just didn't find didn't find enough off the bridle. Didn't have the speed. Uh, to win the race. Um, you know, as I was looking at beforehand, she was after winning two mile five on heavy ground at Navan. Did it very well. Can a horse like that have enough speed to win over two mile at Cheltenham? Uh, I was doubtful. Farm going into the race was poor enough, really, in terms of horses she was beaten. Um, and she's ran well, uh, but bet by Golden Ace. Bet by Golden Ace, yeah. Like, I think you can make excuses for brighter days ahead. Jay DeGruji has none. Uh, Jay DeGruji is a complete busted flush, and you were you were all Jay DeGruji. Like Jay de Well, I was all I was all probably. against brighter days ahead. Uh, I, did think, de I did think yeah. I did think just I did yeah, think yeah, that yeah. I did think that Jay de Grugy was the one definitely to take her on yeah, with. Yeah. And now you can talk about no excuses. To be fair, poor Paul Town and then Jay de Grugy were nearly put out through the rail um, by Jack Kendy on brighter days ahead. There, uh, about I don't know about that now. I don't think it was it was as bad as what you think. Like oh, it was. Yeah, you no, might you might want to watch it back. No, well, the stewards thought it was fine. Yeah, they may have thought it was fine. Well, I suppose it happened. So it happened that far out in the race, they're not going to change anything. Um, you know, if that's what you're hinting at. Um, no, 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 no. They would have given him a ban if it was that bad, like. Yeah, well, it was bad enough that uh, like, but sure, if you're going back, if you want to think about mirrors races at Cheltenham, you know, you can go back and you think it to, um, honeysuckle against uh, what was that for a tricky horse again? But you're no one was rode dangerous that day. You're saying no, he, no, 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 yeah, no, that's no, 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 nobody, like. nobody rode dangerous. But uh, m- movement, a horse getting up on the inside and whatnot, that far out in the race made a difference that day to the result. I think, um, you know, and I think that we would have seen a much better performance from Jade de Grugy had she not been horsed into the rail. Um, you know, about two fences out, two hurdles out. Yeah, Jay DeGruji is a complete busted flush, as I said. I'll continue on where I was going. Uh, Brighter Days Ahead pulled far too hard. She, she didn't settle at all. Um, but again, yeah, she, she not, doesn't, she doesn't, didn't have the speed. That's that is true. speed. But she didn't settle. Like, if you watch the race back, she, wouldn't, she didn't have she the was, speed. She was, she was pulling, she was pulling with, with half a mile left. That's a fact. Watch the race. Yeah, yeah. You she, haven't seen it since. I know you haven't. Yeah, it doesn't matter. She hasn't. But, but I'm, that's an excuse. Speed. That's a legitimate excuse. Okay, so so what is, what, what is she going to be? Uh, what, where do you see her future? Where do I see her future? I think if she goes to Fairy House, she'll win the Mayor's Novice over two and a half miles. Okay. But I think... So she I think could settle how, over two wait, miles. Wait, 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 she could settle over two miles, and now she's going to settle over two and a half miles and win. But she should have. he should have read far more use of the horse than what was done. I think if you ask Jack, he'd to take that one back. He'd have gone far more forward on brighter days ahead, 
I'd say him and Paul Townend were only worried about each other. No one ever, once Ty Sardinos went, once Ty Sardinos went, the two of the lads were looking at each other throughout the race. No one was worried about Golden Ace. That's a fact. Yeah. No way. If I wouldn't have been able to tell you who Golden Ace was before the race. There was three horses in the race. One of them went out the morning of the race. That left two. And it was a match. And they were both beat. And I think they were both too concerned about each other. Like I'm sure Jack didn't say, I don't want to go forward here to let your man just follow me and pick me off. Yeah. That, that's what happened. But I think if you gave Jack that ride back, he'd have made far more use out of Briar Day's head, used her stamina. Yeah. And I'm sure we might we might have a different result. Maybe we wouldn't. Golden Ace was a snug enough winner. But what I will take out of it is I feel sorry for Fergal O'Brien because his mare would have absolutely hosed up. Would have, yeah. 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 And you were slating you were slating them. I was slating them for the campaign week. never. Yeah. For the campaign never. And I do still think so. Like I think we we were like she she went out there with a with a uh some sort of lameness on the gallop Thursday morning. Imagine she had a season or career ending injury and he's won two novice hurdles and it's the best horse he ever had. It'd be sickening. Like he should have been running her in races all season, like other other trainers do. They run in races like do you think Gordon, so? Gordon and Willie weren't shying away from grade threes with when their did, when, when, when did Fargo O'Brien last train at Cheltenham Festival run? He never did. Exactly. And what's he going to do with his best horse that he has ever, he says? He's yeah. going to try and train a Cheltenham Festival winner. How do you do that? It's a grade two. You don't want a five-pound penalty on the day. He campaigned her very smartly, I would have said. Um, I thought he did. Well, he wasn't too smart when she was pulled out in the morning of the race. Like, Well, actually, Jesus. That's unlucky, Killeen. It is unlucky, like, yeah. But, yeah, but sure, put yeah, but, plenty sure, of, but what happens, let's say, if she breaks down. Once, she breaks she down, she she down in the gallops been, tomorrow. She could have been campaigning grade ones all year, and she still... Could have got lame. She's, it but she'd have been. grade ones in her back pocket. And this is the problem. It's all about Cheltenham. It shouldn't be. The grade one is a grade one. A grade three is a grade three. It's black type for mares. His mare has a, a, list, a grade two bumper one. That's fine. But she has no she has no black type in her page for hurdling. And it'd be worth a lot more if but she, she did. stood on the stone. Well, she, not, well, she mightn't have won it. I think she would have. I, I think, to be fair, Fergal O'Brien wanted a Cheltenham Festival winner. He, he gave did, himself yeah. The best chance he gave himself a good chance, yeah. But we'll the say best if that mayor, if that mayor uh, uh, had a career engine injury in the morning, she has two novice hurdles thrown in. Yeah, but sure, that's, that's, that's the travesty that's, for, yeah, for that's, a mayor. That well, no, no, no. That, that's the risk that they take. And I'm sure they'd be, they would be very happy with that risk. You know, the main thing for them was to get a Cheltenham Festival winner and give her the best chance of doing it. So, look, we're going around in circles here. The other thing I'll say on Jade de Grugier, to go back to Jade de Grugier, she was only about two lengths by brighter days ahead after losing ground and losing momentum um, by going into the rail. Um, I would, I'd give Jade de Grugier absolutely every chance of beating brighter days ahead uh, whenever they meet next. Um, well, I'd say brighter days ahead would beat Jade de Grugier 100 times out of 100. You reckon? Yeah, 100%. Miles better horse. Like Birdie or Bust is nice mare and she's beaten Jade de Grugier. And by a lint. Yeah, but sure. okay, okay. Well Birdie the Burst Birdie or Burst was only what? Uh a length less than two lengths behind Brighter Days Ahead. So like you know, they're, they're all nearly on top of each other, Erkeline. Like you yeah, can't be the only thing ever. is Brighter well, Days Ahead Killian, has the excuse be like... of being incredibly keen. No. I didn't settle, but you oh, didn't yeah. watch the race back. I know you didn't. Excuses, excuses. You can't but, have it everywhere, Killian. I'm if just it saying, was, it, no, there's, I, there's it, no, a legitimate Killian. excuse for one mayor and there isn't for the others, for no, the other. No, that, 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 that's what you're coming from. You can't have it everywhere. Like you're I, saying how brilliant Brighter Days Ahead is and then you're knocking Birdie or Burst, who was less than two lengths behind her, and you're knocking Jade de Grugge, and you're knocking the winner almost to an extent. I'm not knocking the winner. No, 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 no. I think, the winner, I think um, the winner would easily have won anyway, but I'm just saying, yeah, the other, but, Jade de Grugier, for all the talk you had about Jade de Grugier and others, and a lot of others had a lot of talk about Jade de Grugier, she's no excuse. Brighter Days Ahead didn't settle until about half a mile left in the race. That's a fact. And if you watch the race back, if you did, I know you didn't, but if you I did, haven't watched that race yeah, back, I know. But sure, I don't uh, need to. I, in fact, I watched it back on the day I did. Absolutely, I did. I watched it. No, you, well, you're, mis- you're misremembering so because she didn't settle till about half a mile left. Did, did I ever say that? That she didn't say But it's a legitimate excuse, and Jade de Grugier has none. I'm Jade, just saying. That's all I'm saying. You, okay, well, if, no way, you, no. You need to watch it back. I've seen it a number of times. You haven't. It was very good race riding from Jack Kinder. You haven't. After very this good podcast, we'll watch it back together and we'll see. Very good race riding. We'll watch it back. We'll we spent too much time talking about this race. 
I never it, it was move great. On, move on, Absolutely. move on, move on. No, no, no. Oh. I'm having the final word there now because you're after you're after adding another dimension into it. It was very good race riding by yeah. Jack Kendy. I'm not saying a bad word about him. There's nothing wrong with it, like. No, no, no. And some excuse. Well, it was a good race riding. Very. It it is an excuse. Absolutely, it. it's an excuse. The horse is caught in a pocket and couldn't get out. If a horse is caught in a pocket and can't get out, you'd you'd always say, "Geez, the horse is unlucky." It's an excuse. The horse is unlucky. Um, you know, it's wrap it up. Come on, wrap it up. Wrap. It up. Uh, Grey Dawning. I have uh, I have that race um in the amber as well, Killian. I know you had it in the green, um, but I've changed it there to the amber. Uh, that Turner's. I'm not fully sure about it at all. Um, you know, three English horses there. The Irish horses haven't performed. Um, you know, you can people can say that I'm being, you know, hammering the English or whatnot. But the bottom line of it is that Ireland had 18 winners and the majority of the Great Ones and England, and that's been the the trend for the last number of years. And England haven't. And the fact that there's three English horses there to top of that race uh, makes me question that form. I don't know about that. I think the front two are very good. Um, great. Ginny's destiny was able to win a handicap off 147 calls enough. Great awnings, uh, smashing jumper. He hammered um, uh, Willie's horse in Haydock. He's given some really good performances. Uh, um, maybe Jello was look. He's he's finished third. A couple of lengths clear as any here, but but I wouldn't question the front two. I think they're both both very very good horses going forward. Particularly Great Awning. Um, I think he's. He was a lot of value for for his win. Um, if he if he didn't sort of hang a bit in the running, I'd say he'd have won by more. Um, but no, it was it was a fair performance now by him, and he th- I think he's a very nice horse for next year. Like I remember saying, Oroco was the worst priced horse of the week. That was a fact. He was like he had never had a chance. Um, with the prep he got, um, and he went off a thirteen to two shot. Did tell you a lot about the strength of the race that Oroco could go off thirteen to two, having only won a beginner's chase last October November like um but I will say that the Irish horses look they weren't they just weren't good enough. You have your Zana here it was a pony really uh went to fences late in life. I know he'd glass over hurdles but like Fasal Vega jumped horrendously. Yeah um, he never had a chance really uh let's be here about it. Charger no they were just like uh, poor Charger just needs to be stood down now at this stage. He's a, he's not given to the game. He does um, to be to be still running around here, but yeah, I think the Irish the Irish horses were weak, but I wouldn't let that take away from from the top two, particularly Great On and anyway. Okay, okay, um, El Fabiolo we touched on already a small, but he's in the amber, um, you know, just wasn't jumping well, really killing, and uh, and and pulled up very early there. It'll be interesting to see what sort of form he comes back in now. Yeah, um, but uh, he's firmly in the amber for that, and finally then uh. You have down here who's the Willie Mullins number two jockey, which is a good question. Yeah, it's a strange one, wasn't it? Um, yeah, because Patrick has been getting a, a great amount of rides there, really. Um, you just wonder who's falling into where in the pecking order or what they're doing. Yeah, it's hard to know. Like you see, like even starting on the mayor's hurdle, Danny on Gala Marceau, Patrick on Astro Diamond. I know. Danny's always rode Gala Marceau, but like if Danny was number two, would he be not be entitled to jump ship to Astro Diamond? Um, I know Patrick Roder and Doncaster, but you know the pecking order is there. It's there. Then the same again in the in the Ballymore. Um, Patrick gets ill Atlantic. Danny on Predators Gold. I know neither mapped, but you'd have assumed the number two would be getting ill Atlantic. So it is. It is an interesting one to see that. Um. There, there is, there isn't really a defined pecking order there. Paul gets it, and it's sort of a scramble for the rest. But yeah, it, it is interesting. Like I, I don't know. Like Patrick's, Patrick's a good rider, but um, like I'd say, he's still an amateur jockey at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, yeah, I, I agree there. Uh, we'll move on to the red there. This is going a bit on a bit longer than we probably would have thought. Um, and there's a couple of good talking points there in the red. Um, at the top of it. Uh, you have uh, the coked up UK race score. Um, do you want to explain that to our listeners? I don't. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Like it's the, as the week wore on, Tuesday fine, Wednesday fine, Thursday getting a bit worse, Friday fucking horrendous. Um, wh- what is wrong with these people? Like, yeah, like I, I don't know. I know everyone. I know it's a big spectacle. It's it's a bit great to out, but like that they're, they're 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 having more than drink, and it's, it's spoiling it for a lot of people there. Yeah. Um, 
like you see there the, down the videos at the Guinness Village and uh, yeah it's just row after row after row like and you know yeah. you know who started it you know who finished it it's the same yes. lads you know yeah and yeah they're they're full of narcotics yeah, and it, it, it's spoiling it for everybody. It is, yeah. yeah. You're, you're, you're right there. And I wouldn't mind, there's more dogs sniffing there. I don't know how they get it in. I is don't it, <laughs> the dogs, must be dogs. Fucking, The kneecap had a good song one time, your sniffer dogs are shite. They must be horrendous. They it's, must be bad dogs. Because yeah, they're terrible dogs. But like even there, you saw we, the way the way we go in there uh, on the main sort of, the main side and... Yeah. Uh, the, the way they, they section you off now so like one time just be sort of a mad rush for the door or for the turnstiles and like the dog the dog might net might only get 30 percent of the people there but the dog is going past every lad now like you know and yeah. like the dog the dog didn't obviously not stop any of these people maybe they would they would consume before they go in yeah. um, but yeah, yeah. they're they're in there and they're causing fucking havoc yeah, may, maybe maybe from the, the from the, the rest dog of the could, people the dog could be on a ghost though he might be getting pet enough. <laughs> I don't know how much the dog is getting pet. Like, is the dog getting pet and is he getting nice dinners or is he getting yeah. bad dinners? Maybe the dog yeah. isn't getting a few treats and he says, Maybe Fuck he needs this. A, yeah, it could be treats throughout the day as well. He's like that, that but, dog in behind you. That dog. I, I, he could go, he'd do a great job. <laughs> yeah, but the only thing is, he's I, the only thing is, he might be a bit lazy. He is very lazy. He hasn't started all year. <laughs> no, no. But uh, yeah. the, the bottom line is, lads, if you're taking your cocaine, leave it at home. Yeah, you know, yeah. but don't drink it at all. And, <laughs> and it's not everybody. And I, I, no. I probably worded it wrong there, reading it straight off the sheet. Uh, by all means, it's not everybody. It's a small minority. Um, it's getting a bigger minority every year, though. It is. It is. Minority but, is growing. Yeah, but it's important to know too, Killian, that this problem goes on in Ireland uh, to a lesser extent, but it goes on in Ireland. It does go on in Ireland, yeah, but not to the um, same degree. It goes on. And it goes. It goes on. I've seen it in. I, I won't name particular tracks, but I've seen it in some particular tracks. Um, I know. Uh, just for example, the biggest meeting there that we have in the year, the Dublin Racing Festival. I I didn't actually notice really many people there on cocaine or anything like that, but I do notice this huge queues for the cubicles, you know. And then and then you have people giving out saying, "No, oh, the queues for the toilets are a disgrace." Well, if you leave your cocaine at home, I says there'll yeah. be no queue for the toilet. You'll walk in, you'll take your whiz, you'll take your number two, whatever you need to do, and you go back out, and there'll be no queue. Uh, yeah. the queue is for lads using the cubicles for what they shouldn't be using it for. Um, you know, so look, it, it it's an issue at both sides of the water, but it, it's very frustrating because uh, yeah, yeah, it does take away from the day. Um, you know, and you can see there that the crowd is on edge, uh, from it, and there's there's only going to be a, a yeah, row. And the same thing there. then as well when when people go into night into the into a pub after race and lads are getting slaps into the mouth. You know, it's fucking ridiculous. Like I, I saw a fella, I saw a fella one three one laid out. <laughs> yeah, laid out. Yeah, yeah. It's, but it's it's he, wrong, like you know. He was just and, walk, He was walking in the door. He got a shot into the shoulder, uh, and he only stood there. And the next thing, he gets a he got a belt into the jaw, um, and that's what you're dealing with, um, you know. Yeah, so you just it just it's something that needs to be looked at. Yeah, no, look, we we, we, yeah. we won't spend too much longer on no. that, um. What we will speak about then again, I suppose, is while we're talking about the race course and that the price of Cheltenham killing. Very expensive. Now, I do think there was probably a, a move by the, the jockey club to increase prices to try and drive some of the some of the scummers out. Yeah. And it hasn't worked. Uh, it's only souring lads that have been going racing there for years that are just, you know, they've they've seen this ticket price go up and up and up and up. And the race scorer experience, as we spoke about, is worse. It's it hasn't hasn't been good for a long time and I don't know how they're going to fix it I'm not here to offer them any solutions now and I actually know a man that's been going to Cheltenham for years and he actually had had a winner at Cheltenham not so long ago only about three or four years ago and he went off to Marbella for the week instead of going to Cheltenham he said it's too expensive to go racing it's too expensive to get a pint and he was planning to do the Wednesday Tuesday Wednesday in Cheltenham and then fly to Marbella and for a finish he said you know what fuck it I'm going for the week and he thoroughly enjoyed himself by all accounts over there yeah, well, like, look, they're 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 going to have to do something one way or another anyway, um, because you look at other initiatives that they're doing, like Style Wednesday. What a load of cods wallop, um, like, you know, nobody there who's into racing and whatnot is any way offended by Ladies Day, um, you know. So I I don't know what they're trying to please or who they're trying to please, but like, their bread and butter is the the race score, you know, like the lads who are into racing, and. 
they're souring those lads. You know, the, the bread is the bread is going off. And I tell you, the new bread coming in is full of coke. Um, you know, and that's that's the problem, Killian. Um, you know, and they just need to take a, a step back and have a long, hard look at themselves. Um, it, it's what I'd say because I love Cheltenham. Uh great place, and I'll be back there again next year. But they they need to sort something out. Um, you know, they definitely need to start something out on that. The UK handicapper again. We're we're getting a, a fair few people here now in the red uh this week, Killian. A fair few people are getting the brunt of it. But um, you know, you see like the likes of Lark in the morning, Langer Dan, unexpected party. Langer Dan was one to piss most people off. Yeah. And we we had a row about this on Wednesday. A fierce row. I think Langer Dan was a thousand times worse than Lark in the morning, and I'll tell you why. Yep. Langer Dan's run in Kempton, right? In January. There's a vet's report after racing saying he has ulcers. Okay? Yeah. So, obviously, if you have ulcers, you're not going to be able to perform. Yeah. Despite the fact the horse had ulcers, he was dropped two pounds. Right. Can your man not read a fucking vet's report or a steward's report? What's he looking at? You know, to say that the horse has had ulcers, yet I'm going to drop him two pounds anyway, when it's more than likely... The ulcers was a big thing that was stopping him. It wasn't all because the trainer was stopping the horse. Um, very plainly obvious. But like he won off one four one last year. He got six pounds for it. Fair enough. He only won by a head. He's came back and managed to get the horse in again off one four one, and he's absolutely fucking shitting. Yeah. Like. Yeah. The last well, horse I heard booed in Cheltenham was Dell to Work, and that was for a very different reason. People were booing Langer Dan coming in. Yeah. After what happened, now yeah. I didn't back like, him. And yeah, maybe if I did, I have less stale taste in my mouth. But yeah, like I thought it was wrong. Now what really happened? Yeah, but like and Dan Skelton can walk into a steward's room and say, "Oh, sure, he was scoped and he was found wrong the last day, and then he had ulcers in his stomach." And it's like, why? I'm not blaming Dan Skelton. Now. I'm blaming the handicap. Why is he yeah. dropping a horse okay. that has? Yeah, well, that well, well, that that yeah. that's good, and and your tone has changed since we spoke. Um, because everybody should be given out about the UK handicapper. People have been given out about Dan Skelton on Twitter, at the track and whatnot. Huge amount of people given out about Dan. And Dan, like, if you want to give out about Dan Skelton, that is completely fine. Have your go at him. But have your go at everybody else who does it. I'm not going to name names. Everybody knows who's at it in Irish racing, English racing. You know, have your go across the board. But that wasn't the case, what we saw during the week. We saw everybody hammering into Dan Skelton like you never see it before. And when somebody in Ireland does it, they're hailed as geniuses. So, like, you know, you just you either have your have your bread and eat it or don't have it at all. But just be one way or another is is my point on that. But I, I, I'll continue on, though. Like, so, yeah. so if the English handicapper was watching Lark in the morning, right? Yeah. He's, he's been bet nine lengths, 13 lengths, and four lengths in three maiden hurdles. Okay. Yeah. He's assigned him a rating of 122. That is on the English handicapper. The English handicapper saw had saw an Irish mark of 120 and said plus two is fine. Good time, Johnny, for a trainer that's synonymous with this sort of stuff for years. Yeah. And a very good trainer, Tony Martin. Had good time Johnny won a pretemps last year, had got in, got an Irish mark of 132. And the English handicapper said no, ten pounds. There was nothing stopping the English handicapper giving Lark in the morning ten pounds, and Lark in the morning would have stayed at home, and we'd have had Eagles Rain would have run the race, and that would have been that. But he yeah. said no, so it's the English handicapper is totally at fault here. The yeah. Irish man, fair enough, you can say he had his pants pulled down by by them. He signed a rating of one hundred and twenty, but he stood over it. The English lad has been increasing horses from different yards at varying degrees and he decided I'm going to fleece Tony Martin I can tell you for a fact that good time Johnny is being stopped I can also tell you good time Johnny can't jump a fence <laughs> like maybe he's had very little schooling over fences but the fact of the matter is a horse can't jump a fence Lark yeah. in the morning is well able to jump a hurdle he could have given him 10 if he wanted to he would have stayed at home but he didn't he's been dropping English horses good oh good oh you saw it the first five home of the pretense for English do you mean to tell me if that race was ran in Ireland, the first five home being be English, they wouldn't their fuck? Yeah. No, no way. 
Yeah, and no, the way the way he's he's changed his attitude towards Irish horses the last few years is like it's wrong. Number one, you have the 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 BHA chief executive Julie Harrington saying we've got it's like we've got an Irish infestation. No, Julie, your own fucking house isn't in order. That's why you're not winning races. Yeah, like yeah. there's a there's a lot to be talked about here. And I I I agree I agree with what you're saying there. Uh, you know the BHA the UK handicapper. I get behind all of that. All day I will. But just to those who are listening, who are having a go at Dan Skelton, my issue is with, with those people. Um, You know, if you have an issue with Dan Skelton, have an issue with everybody else. Um, Because I've seen a lot of people who'd give, uh, you know, trainers a pat on the back for landing a bit of a touch and for handicapping one well. And Jesus, he's, a, he's shrewd. You know, that's what they're saying. And then Dan Skelton does it and he's the worst man in the world. So I just say, don't be speaking out of both sides of your mouth. Um, oh, well, Dan, I... Dan Skelton, like he now, like the thing about Dan is he didn't do it once. He did it twice in the one, the one, the one day, you yeah, know, fair he, juice to him. he did it again with unexpected party. Yeah, yeah, it's fair juice him. It's the same yeah. thing though. Like, but, but, but what's your man but, looking at? When, you know? Yeah, but I, I, I give a trainer a pat in the back here in Ireland when to do it and I call him shrewd. I'd say he'd laid one out and fair play to him and you'd have your couple of quid on it possibly and fair juice to him. Dan has just done that, uh, you know. So I just think that the people having a go at him, uh, unless they're having a go at everybody, uh, they shouldn't be having a go at him. But look, Killian, this is after going on a lot longer than we thought, but there was a hell of a lot to get through. Um, those who stayed with us throughout the whole thing, thanks very much. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I don't have a clue when we'll be back with you next. Um, Killian might have an answer if that's tough. Fairy House, fairy house uh, possibly. Yeah, I'd say probably yeah. just Fairy House and entry now, mm-hmm. maybe, and and maybe Bunch just of town. And be in, just down the course. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, but uh, they they definitely will be quieter now over the next few weeks. Um, but look again, thanks very much for listening. Hope you all had a great Cheltenham. Thanks for listening to us uh, throughout the year up to Cheltenham, and we'll be back to you before Fairy House. All the best. Thank you. Bye. It's Honey Circle and Rachel Blackmore Racing Spurs!